This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends Collection. This interview was originally conducted on May the 7th and June the 28th, 1971. The interview was conducted by Mr. Pendleton Woods. The interviewee is Dr. T.L. Ballinger of Tahlequah, Oklahoma. This interview is being re-recorded on July the 18th, 1985, for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. Ken Woods interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends. The date is uh, May 1971, and uh, we are in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and I'm visiting with uh, uh, Dr. Ballinger. Uh, Dr. Ballinger is a longtime uh, faculty member, has been one of the builders, really, of the uh, uh, Northeastern State College and we will be talking with him about the college and about his personal background. I think to start, uh, Dr. Ballinger, if you would tell us your, uh, uh, where you were born and who your parents were the, uh, and where you were educated. Well, I was born in Yale County, Arkansas about three or four miles east of the village of Rover. My parents came from Mississippi to Arkansas in 1872 and settled in that region, bought land there, and settled on a farm, living in a at first in a little log house, later in a better frame structure. Then when I was about four years old, we moved to Rover for better educational facilities. And that's where I lived until I was up in my teens and then came to Oklahoma. I taught school some in Arkansas and then came to Oklahoma to teach. The, uh, where did you first teach in Oklahoma? I first taught down in Stevens County at the little town of Loco taught there one year, then went to Mangum in Greer County, where I taught two years in the public school of Mangum as superintendent of one of the public schools. The, uh, could you describe the, the schools of Mangum at that time? Were they, what were the schools like at that time? Oh, at, at Mangum, they had just put in a, an excellent new school building, enrolled about 7,000 or 200 students. It was quite a large school building. They had a high school building a block or two away and another school or two at that time. It was quite a, quite a good school town at that time. About what was the teacher's salary at this time? About what did you make a month or a year? The salaries were not very large. I think I received a hundred dollars a month while I was there. Seems to me that that was my salary. How and when did you uh, first become associated with Northeastern? How did you get your job? Well, after I left Mangum, I I went back to the University of Chicago where I finished a 
bachelor's degree and obtained my master's degree. And then I was employed as a teacher in Northeastern State College at Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And I came there and taught continuously, oh, at least with, with one slight intermission. I taught there for about 35 or six years until my retirement. What were the uh, main courses you taught? What was your main field of work? When I first came to Northeastern, uh, this was in 1914, just five years after the college had been established. And I was head of the history department at that time. In fact, there was, there was just one teacher in the department. I was the head of the department and the teacher and all. We had a, a general college here that comprised a teaching department. They had the primary students, the elementary students, high school students, all in the uh, teaching department with teachers for that purpose, and then we had the college department consisting of two years of college, freshman and sophomore. And that's as far as the college work extended until 1920 when it was enlarged to a four-year college course granting degrees. At first, we had only about 250 students in the college department. And I had charge of the history work. For all 250? Well, for all the history work that was pursued by the 250 students. They didn't all take history. Mm -hmm. But I had the history uh, subjects for all that took that line of work. What were the students like mostly back then? Were they energetic toward learning or were they kind of rowdy at times? The students and the faculty at that time got along together very well. Uh, being small in number, there was a closer relationship between the students and the faculty, far closer relationship than there is at the present time in the complex structure of today. We had no particular trouble with discipline at that time. The students were respectful to the teachers. The teachers gave due consideration to all the rights of the students, and there was much closer harmony between the two than exist in colleges and universities of today. We didn't have any protesting or rioting or anything of that kind. Occasionally there would be a disciplinary measure that would be handled entirely by the faculty, and that's all there was to it. Was this a uh, change from the uh, students being close and the teachers, you know, the relationship being very close, was this a gradual change over the years? Uh, when you retired in 1951, was there much of a noticeable change then? Well, there were, there were more disciplinary problems toward the time of my retirement. This, of course, was due in part to the much larger number of students 
into some change of attitude and relationships, but we had much less disciplinary problem in the beginning of the college than exists at the present time. And we didn't have nearly as much when I retired as the college seems to have today. Uh, would you uh, suggest then that college should become smaller again and would this improve the education? Do you think this would improve education? No, that, uh, that is an impossibility. We can't, we can't control these things. Colleges grow. There are more young people to be educated and it just brings about different conditions over which nobody has control. Yeah. Hard to say whether it would be better. In fact, you, you can't go back to times 50 or 60 years ago. You have to meet conditions as they exist today. Uh, when, the chair, when the seminaries uh, in Northeastern was first beginning, you know, the athletic contest, was the, when was the first football team organized for the men to play? Uh, I've heard that women sometimes played. We had uh, good athletic teams in the college when I first came to the college. We had a good football team. We had nothing but an open field to play on, no, no equipment, whatever. Uh, when a football game was scheduled in the afternoon, the college was dismissed, and uh, all the students and teachers went out and spent about an hour picking up rocks off the field and clearing the field of all obstacles preparatory to the game. And when we had a football game, it was just about as exciting as one is at the present time. The conditions were just somewhat different. We had some real football players back at the very beginning of the college. Who were the teams you played most against? Who were the schools you played against? Oh, I can't remember just what schools we played against. We played against the other colleges of the state, just like we do now. And uh, some colleges, even up in Kansas. We had a big football player here from Kansas. I can't remember his name now, but he was a fine player and made a good record for the college. Did he fight here in Tahlequah and uh, Thompson that later coached for the Indian school south of town were good players. That is Tommy Thompson. They were good players. We had uh, a number of outstanding players that later came to be athletic coaches and schools around over the state. What was it uh, like? What other athletic contests did they have? They played football. What else did they play along, along the lines of athletics? When I first came here, we had a basketball court outdoor court just north of the college, just in a few yards of the main building. And this, this Cherokee female seminary building that was put up by the Cherokees here in 1889 was the only building on the campus when I first came here. We had an outdoor basketball court just north of the building. We played there not in the very 
part of winter, but we played quite early in the spring. We had no heating arrangements at that time except a few barrels, uh, iron barrels, in which we'd put some coal and wood and burn them. They gave some heat for the people, but we had good basketball games, had tournaments with teams all the way from way up in Kansas and over in Arkansas and some down in Texas and had some real basketball tournaments here at that time. Uh, what was the playing surface like? Like today they play on hard wood inside of a gym. Was it a dirt uh, court or did they have cement court? It is purely a dirt court with the uh, seats on each side of it, raised seats, just like you sometimes see in a, at a outdoor football field today. And pure dirt court, however. Did most everybody play barefooted back then, or did they have a form of tennis shoes that they wore? Oh, they had tennis shoes. Gravels would hurt their feet <laughs> too bad if they played barefooted. <laughs> what, what did the women play? Did they have any uh, tournaments with other schools like the men did in football? We, had, football? Uh, we had men's teams and women's teams. And they played, the women entered in the competition with women and the men with men, of course, but we had teams of both sexes. Were uh, the teams that, that played, were, uh, who was the coaches for these teams? Did they have a coach for e each different team or was usually the same person uh, like, for instance, the head basketball coach, would he teach the men and the women both, or did they have a coach for the men and a separate one for the women? They usually had a men's coach and a women's coach. Occasionally, there would be a man that would coach a women's team and a men's team both but the coaches were usually of the same sex as the team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about how many people graduated the first year you taught here? On graduation, about how many graduated? Oh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> I'd say 15 to 25 or 30 would be an average size class. Did, uh, were there very many people that say got their major or did the most of their work in history? About how many were in the field of history that you were teaching out of this uh, uh, graduating class? About what was the average size that, that uh, did their work in history? Oh, possibly the history department was the largest single department in the school. They had uh, mathematics, English, history, and departments just about as they have today. The history department possibly was a little larger than any other department and had correspondingly large enrollment compared with the other departments. Uh, you mentioned that the seminary hall presently is uh, was the only building then. Was it a boarding school, or did they have dormitories of some kind built up, or did the students live in seminary hall, live right in the building? No, no, that's that's back in territorial days when the Cherokees operated the school. After statehood, it was used purely as a school building, nothing more nor less. No boarding students or anything of the kind. Mm -hmm. the, the boarding students who attended Northeastern in 
early times, uh, stayed in homes in the town. There was a time that a number of students brought tents and had a regular camping place here adjoining the campus. They brought the tents here and lived the year round and attended college, but most of them boarded out in town. We had no dormitories or any facilities on the campus for keeping students. This, this Cherokee building that was bought by the state at statehood was the only building on the campus for several years after the college started. The second building that is erected was the little brick building that still stands just north of the old building, which they now call the seminary building. It was not nearly as large as it is at present. It was not more than a third as large as it is at present and was built originally for a football bathhouse where the football students uh, used before and after games. In more recent years, it's been enlarged to its present uh, size. The third building that we had on the campus was a student union building that stood between our original basketball court and the present library building. This was a one-story frame structure uh, used both by the students and the faculty in about the same use was made of it as is made today of the uh, student union building. Though, of course, our Enrollment in our faculty was much smaller than today, but that served all the purposes that the student union building serves today. We had uh, lunches there, we had parties there, we students and teachers gathered there for conferences and it was it was a regular student union building at that time. Uh, you mentioned before that a lot of the students uh, lived in their tents and things. Uh, what was downtown Tahlequah like at this time? Did they have many hotels for the students to live in and boarding houses downtown? They had no, no regular facilities for boarding students in Tahlequah except except at residences. No, there was no hotel or motel was a thing that hadn't been invented at that time. <laughs> uh, about how far was the main campus from, from downtown Tahlequah? You know, like today it's just meets right at the end of Main Street. Was uh, Tahlequah expanded this far in those days, or was it uh, a good walk then to Tahlequah, back downtown? Tahlequah, when I first came here, so far as Main Street is concerned, was about the same that it is now. The street extended right up to the entrance to the college. When I came to Tahlequah, there, were, there was no pavement, whatever. The street was just a, a dirt street, mud in the winter time, dust in the summer time, side, with sidewalks part the way along. And part of the time, the sidewalks were the same as the street; they were dirt. 
And in some cases, the sidewalks were made of plank. But the main street extended clear up to the entrance of the college, about as it does now. What was the weather like most of the time in the winter? Can you remember any severe winters they had with heavy snow or like in the spring and fall, a heavy rain and tornadoes? Do you remember any real bad weather like we're having today that would possibly, you know, recollect? <laughs> well, the weather hasn't particularly changed in Tahlequah or anywhere else <laughs> in the last 50 or 60 years. It was then about as it is now. We put up with the weather. <laughs> we didn't have any assembly place in time of storms like they do now where the scared people go. But each one took care of himself in cases of weather. There's no particular difference then and now. Nature doesn't change very much. <laughs> uh, getting back to the graduation of the students, uh, what kind of advice or uh, along that line would you hand down to students graduating today? What kind of preparation, you know, for for a life to live uh, probably to its fullest extent? What kind of advice would you give to a student graduating then and then to a student graduating now? Are your questions recorded on this? Yeah. There was no particular difference in the exhortation given to students then than what is given now. We had good speakers to address the students at graduation time, just as good as we have at the present time, and something like the same advice was given to them that is given to them today. The, grad the students who graduated from Northeastern from the very beginning have gone out over the state and have held good positions in the public schools and in the high schools, just like they do today. Possibly there's, there are more advantages, and a graduate of today is in better position to teach and to know more than the early graduates did. But in general, they perform the same functions then that they perform now and receive the same instructions at graduation time that they do today. Is uh is there anything that uh, you would like to relate that we haven't, uh, you know, talked about yet? Is there anything you can think of, any particular stories that happened to you or to a student you knew that was particularly funny or uh, <laughs> something along this line that might be of interest, you know, to people today to, f to find out that they're not the first ones to pull a certain dumb trick or something? I know I've pulled some real good tricks once in a while, and it's, it's sometimes it's a pleasure not to know that I'm the only one that's ever done it. Well, that question is hard to answer right offhand. I, lots of incidents down through the years have taken place. In fact, as I meet former students of mine from time to time, at places I go around over the state, they're all the time telling me something that happened in my classroom or in connection with the college that I don't remember myself. They assure me that it took place and I don't, I don't remember everything. I had so many students and so many things to look after that I don't, didn't remember all the jokes. I met with a a superintendent of schools a few years ago uh, whose name I 
hardly remembered. And yet he reminded me that he didn't remember so much in history, but he remembered one story that I told him in class. He said that I told him of a little boy who was who came in the house and said to his mother, Mother, I saw the biggest old lion out in the yard a while ago. And the mother says, Now, you know that isn't true. There was no lion out there. You go in the closet and ask God to forgive you for your telling a story. And the little boy went in the closet and stayed a while to the came back and the mother says, well, what did, how did you make it? The little boy says, oh, God said it was all right, says, when I first saw that big dog out there, I thought he was lying myself. <laughs> the students remember a lot of incidents like that, but I sometimes forget that ever happened but yeah a lot of incidents like that that I sometimes forget to ever happened but yeah the the first president of this college was Sid Wiley mm -hmm. Sid Wiley was uh, well thought of Cherokee leader here in Tahlequah they, they wanted to honor him with the presidency of the college, but he realized that he was not presidential timber, and although he accepted the appointment at first, before the school really started, he resigned his position and turned it over to another appointee. Well, Mr. Buck was president for a short time. J. Frank Red was president for a short time. Mr. Gill served a short time. All these first four or five presidents, though, all together served only about four or five years. G.W. Gable was made president of the college in 1914. I, I came here shortly after he began as president. And then W.T. Ford served as president next, and then came Mr. Hammond, and then Mr. Vaughn, and so on down the line to the present time. Well, is there anything else that uh, you can uh, recollect that you might want to, re to relate to us? That, uh, were, were most of the students here, were a uh, uh, majority of them, or most of them Indian students, or were there a lot of uh, uh, white students that came to school here when you first started? When I first started, there were, there were more Indian students in comparison with the whole number of students than there are today, considerably more Indian. The Cherokee males seminary was burned in 1910 from statehood up to 1910 the 
Cherokee girls went to school at the male seminary, the Cherokee male seminary. When it was burned in in 1910, all the Cherokee students, uh, boys and girls, came to Northeastern. And the seminaries were never restored after that. And so at first there were a good many more Indian students in proportion to the enrollment than there are today. But there's no particular difference in Indian students and white students. There were no, no colored students at that time. In fact, there were no colored students in Northeastern until 1951. Well, Mr. Ballinger, it's been uh, quite a privilege uh, talking to you today. Uh, I'd like to sincerely thank you for your contributions here to the Oklahoma Christian uh, Living Legends Library. Thank you very much. You're welcome.